And I'd like to introduce to you Terry Savelle Foy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Yes, sir. Thank you. How is everybody? <laughs> well, y'all can be seated. I have to say, first of all, I am so amazed that you got out tonight in the snow. <laughs> that just shocks me, because there was a little bit of snow at my hotel, and if we were in Dallas, everything would be shut down. <laughs> Church would be canceled, schools canceled, everything. So y'all are pretty amazing to me. Um, I do want to say how much I love the Hammond family. Jim, I love y'all so much. Have the greatest respect. And I love this church. I just think you are in the right place at the right time. I mean, this church, these pastors are just pure excellence, aren't they? Pure class. So, yeah, we should give them a hand. So, you know, I tried to look a little more professional tonight and not too pink. So, did I do okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, I'm honored to be here. And I do want to say, you know, being in the right place at the right time, I heard someone say that your environment can stretch you or it can shrink you. And John Maxwell calls it the law of the rubber band. If you want to go to the next level, you got to be stretched, right? So we're going to do some stretching tonight. Does that sound fun? Let me ask real quick. How many of you have never heard me before? Raise your hand. Did y'all warn them? <laughs> My voice did get a little damaged. I used to sound like Joyce Meyer, but I got a little, <laughs> a little, bit, a little bit damaged, but um, God's restoring it. So anyway, I do want to teach something tonight. Just one success principle from God's Word. Just one principle. And it's on the art of asking. Are you ready? You want to get right into it? Okay, and welcome to the live stream viewers too. I'm so glad they're watching. Okay, so to get started with this, some of you have probably heard stories about Walt Disney. And you know how he was an impossibility thinker, right? And you've heard how when Walt Disney would meet with his board of directors, you know, he would throw out all these ideas. And if everyone at the table said, Walt, that's a great idea, let's do it, he'd say, then that's not what we're going to do. Then he would throw out ideas. And if everyone at the table said, Walt, that's impossible. No one's ever done anything like that. He'd say, then that's what we're going to do. He was an impossibility thinker, right? Well, I found out that God wants you and me to be impossibility thinkers. He wants us to dream so big, so outside the realm of possibility, that the only way we can achieve our dreams is if we use our faith, right? Doesn't the Bible say it's impossible to please God without faith, right? So y'all know this, but when you get born again, you are given the measure of faith, right? Every one of us are given the same measure of faith. Pastor Mac, Pastor Jim, they weren't given more faith when they were born. We're all given the same measure of faith. It's just like muscles. When we're all born, we're all given the same muscles, right? But you look at people like the power team. You remember those big guys that would rip phone books and like break bricks with their head and stuff? <laughs> What's the difference in their muscles and say my muscles? You might say not much, but the point is, the only difference is that they have developed their muscles to a greater degree so they can handle more weight, right? Well, I found out it's the same with faith. You see some people believing for millions of dollars and others are believing to put groceries on the table. What's the difference? This one has just learned how to develop their faith to a greater degree so they can believe for more. So my question was, well, then how do I get that kind of faith to believe for millions of dollars, right? Well, the number one method God has given us to build our faith is right here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So every time you hear God's word, your faith gets stronger. Your faith is stronger tonight just because you came here than it was yesterday because faith comes by hearing, right? So I have to show you this, because this is how I think of faith. Um, were y'all ready for some props? Yeah. I think this might be the cutest prop I've ever had. It's a giant aspirin. Is that cute? <laughs> so here's my point. I think of faith like a pill. Like I do not understand 
that when a doctor prescribes a pill, you swallow it, it goes down to your stomach, and it makes a headache disappear. I do not understand how that works, but if I do what the doctor says to do, I'm going to get the results he says I can have, right? It's the same with faith. I do not understand how having faith in my heart can make dreams on a vision board come to pass. But if I do what God says to do, I'm going to get the results he says I can have, right? I know, it's a big pill to swallow, but (laughs) I'll put that there. I just had to say that. So I want to get started by telling you a story, and you've probably heard this story from my favorite preacher, Jerry Savelle. Are y'all familiar with him? (laughs) And by the way, he texted me right before the service and said to give all of you his love. So... But, you know, my dad tells this story, and I'm pretty sure he's probably told it here before. But I'll just summarize it real quick. This was back in the 1980s when my dad was doing a lot of mission work over in Africa. And do you all remember the famous preacher Oral Roberts? So Oral Roberts contacted my dad and said, I want to go with you to Africa, see what you're doing, see if I can get involved in your work. So dad was sort of freaking out because that was his hero. And Oral Roberts wants to go see what he's doing. So they get to Africa. You've probably heard this, so I'm going to go quick. They get there, and they're having this big ceremony. I mean, Dad's like building clinics and orphanages and all this stuff. So they had this big ceremony. The president of Kenya, government officials, lawyers, doctors, all these prominent people in this room. And there's a podium where this government official was speaking. And behind them was a table where my dad and Oral Roberts were seated. So you can imagine the whole audience can see my dad, right? So as this guy's talking at the podium, Oral Roberts picks up a napkin and he starts scribbling on it. And my dad kind of leans over and sees that he's writing on a napkin. And then he wads it up and throws it. Grabs another napkin, writes something, wads it up, throws it, does it again. Then he hands it to my dad and says, read this. So dad opens it up and he goes, I don't know what this says. He goes, read it again. Dad said, I don't understand this. He said, read it again. My dad said, Strebor Laro? He said, I don't know what this means. And you know what Oral Roberts said? That's Oral Roberts spelled backwards. (laughs) Do you remember this story? And so dad said, why are you writing your name backwards? And he goes, because I'm bored. (laughs) And my dad said, you're bored like we bore you? And he said, yes. He said, I'm bored by your small plans and I'm bored by your small thinking. So here's my question for you tonight. Is God sitting up in heaven, (laughs) writing his name backwards, (laughs) because he is bored like a dog by your small plans. Now, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm just sharing with you what God shared with me. So let me tell you how this message came about. So about three years ago, exactly, I was out walking my big dog, (laughs) Beauregard, and I just felt like the Lord said to me, he said, you're not asking big enough. You're not asking big enough. And then he said, ask big and believe it's done. And then he said to me, if it's in your heart, it's there for a reason. Ask me for something big. Let me just ask you real quick. Do you believe that this Bible is the number one success book ever written? Do you believe everything you need to live your dreams can be found in this book? Well, let's listen to what the author said. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. For everyone who asks receives. To the one who seeks finds. The one who knocks it will be open. How much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Could we seriously be missing out on things because we're not asking God for things? You know, I heard Steve Harvey say this. He said his mom ingrained seven words in him as a kid. You have not because you ask not. He said, that scripture, it's not just in rich people's Bibles. He said, it's in your Bible. (laughs) And then he said, most people aren't living the life of their dreams because they're not asking God for the life of their dreams. And then he made this statement that I have to be real careful saying, but Steve Harvey said, if you up your ask, God will up his give. (laughs) My staff was walking around going, up your ask. And I was like, y'all, be careful. (laughs) Make sure there's a K on the end of that. But... If you up your ask, God will up his give, right? So I found out 
that there are at least 33 scriptures in the Bible where God says to ask him for things. You know, when God says something one time, he means it, doesn't he? When he says something 33 times, you better believe he's trying to get our attention, right? So I found another scripture, John 16, 24, and listen to what it says. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. And then the next part says, ask and you shall receive. So I want to break apart this phrase the Lord gave me. Ask big and believe it's done, okay? So the first part of that was just ask. And of course, companies, sales teams, they study the art of asking, right? In fact, years ago, McDonald's trained their staff to ask one question when somebody ordered a hamburger and a drink. Do you know what the question was? <laughs> I just happen to have them right here. <laughs> Would you like fries with that order? Apparently, a lot of people said, sure, why not? That single question raised their bottom line more than $20 million the first year. Ask and you shall receive, right? Well, I was reading an article about Mrs. Fields, not the cookie lady, but the heiress. <laughs> she got sad. Not the cookie lady, but the heiress to the Marshall Fields department store. So she was a huge donor for the University of Chicago. Well, one day... Um, no, yeah, she was a huge donor for Chicago. She gave a million dollars to the University of Chicago, but she used to give millions of dollars to Northwestern University. So one day, Northwestern was reading the paper, and they saw where she gave a million dollars to the University of Chicago. And they called her up, and they said, why did you give them a million dollars? What do you think she said? They asked. And then she said this, you didn't. See, I think the saddest day in heaven would be when God gives you a glimpse of all that you could have had, you could have done, you could have been, and you say, I didn't get any of that. Why not? And he says, you never asked. Terry finally learned how to ask, but you never asked. So if it really is that simple, then why don't we ask? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons, but some of them I would say shame, guilt, don't feel worthy, we doubt God will really give us that. Unbelief. Who am I to ask God for something like that, right? So I want to tell you this little example I heard about Tony Robbins. Now, this was back when Tony Robbins was first learning about success. And he was mentored by a guy named Jim Rohn. Have any of you ever studied from Jim Rohn? He's passed away. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But Jim Rohn was a mentor to Tony Robbins. And he told him one day, he said, Tony, you have such a poor mentality. He said, you have a poverty mindset. You don't even expect anything from God. He said, did you know that God's word says to ask and you shall receive? He said, did you know God's word says to come boldly to the throne? He said, Tony, life will pay you any price you ask of it, but you got to start asking. So he told him this. He said, I want you to go to the bank and take $300 out of your savings account, even if that's all you've got. He said, take it out. Don't spend it. But he said, I want you to put it on the outside of your money clip. So every time you get your money out, you are conditioning your mind to see prosperity, to see abundance, to see wealth. And he began to teach him other success principles and things. And of course, Tony Robbins became very successful. Well, years later, Tony was speaking at a conference in Boston. And when he walked out of the convention center, downtown Boston, he said this homeless man walked right up to him and just said, Mr., can you loan me some change? So Tony said he reached in his pocket and he pulled out some change. And then he thought, wait a minute, I'm going to practice this on this homeless man. So he said he reached in his wallet and he pulled out the $300. And he said to this homeless man, he said, listen, sir, life will pay you any price you ask of it. He said, God's word says, ask and you shall receive. God's word says to come boldly to the throne. And he said that that homeless man just looked at him. He looked at the hundreds. He looked at the change. He looked back at Tony Robbins, looked back at the hundreds, <laughs> looked at the change. And then he said to Tony Robbins, you're weird. <laughs> but that's not all he did. The homeless man grabbed the change and ran off. Now, you listen to that story and you think, that is so sad. Like, why didn't he just take the money and run, right? But that homeless man asked for what he thought he was worth. He didn't think he was worth $300. 
And you know, when you hear that, you think, that is such a sad story. But what are you asking God for? Are you asking God to put gas in your car or pay off the car? God said, you're not asking big enough. Ask big and believe it's done, right? So let me give you a key point real quick, is when you're asking God for things, be clear on what you're asking. Don't be vague. Don't say, Lord, I'm asking you for increase this year. Well, here's 30 bucks and there's your increase. No, be clear on what you're asking. That's a key point in success, right? Clarity is one of the single most important keys to success. Well, just to kind of summarize this real quick, but people who know me from years ago, they'll say things like, Terry, are you shocked at what God has done in your life? Because, I mean, God has done amazing things. We've got over 40 million views on YouTube. We, I just wrote my 15th book. I was telling Jim I had dinner at John Maxwell's house last week. I mean, God's done amazing things, right? But when people say, are you shocked? And let me just say this real quick. The people that know me from years ago, I was one of the most insecure girls you could ever meet. Um, just in summary, when I was 14 years old, I was violated by a guy at a fitness center, lost my virginity on a gym floor by a complete stranger. And I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase, but you behave in a manner consistent with how you see yourself. After that happened, I literally thought I was the ugliest person in the world. I thought I was worthless. I was shy. I was insecure. And I began letting people treat me like I was worthless. Got into an abusive relationship for two years. Finally got out of that. My last semester at Texas Tech University, I got pregnant before marriage. I borrowed my sister's dress. Kenneth Copeland and my dad did my wedding. I was so humiliated. Three weeks after the wedding, I lost the baby. So I just felt like a big failure. But I started hearing God's word and hearing God's word and hearing God's word for myself. And Mac Hammond was a huge part in my transformation. I mean, push, play, rewind, push, play, rewind, push, play. Hearing the word over and over until it changed me from the inside out. And then I began giving myself permission to dream. And I began getting clear on what I wanted. And I started writing my dreams and writing down what I was asking God for. And so when people say to me today, Terry, are you shocked at what God has done in your life? You know what I say? I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I think I say thank you, Jesus, 57 times a day because I'm seriously that grateful, but I'm not shocked because everything that's happening in my life today, I asked the Lord for it yesterday. He said, ask and you shall receive, right? So let me, I'm just going to share with you a couple things just to show you what God wants us to do. So years ago, when I started giving myself permission to dream, I posed in front of a bookstore acting like I'm a successful author. I hadn't even written a book when I did that, okay? But let's see what God's Word says. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe you have received it, and it will be yours. Eleven months after I posed in front of a bookstore, I got a phone call from a woman, don't even know who she is, and she said, I'm a literary agent. I didn't even know that's what they were called, and I would love to represent you and get your books published. Here I am walking in Barnes & Noble, seeing my books on the shelf. Ask, and you shall receive, right? Years later, I said, you know what? I said, Lord, I would love to have my books translated in five different languages, and I listed the languages. One of them was German. I don't speak German, never been to Germany, don't know anybody in Germany, but I just thought that would be cool. So I put a map of Germany in my dream book. Let's see what God's word says. John 14, 14. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Seven months after I put a map of Germany in my dream book, my assistant Donna, who's here tonight, she gets an email from a man in Germany inviting me to come speak at a conference. And the email said, if Terry agrees to come speak at the conference, we are going to have the largest publisher in the country of Germany who wants to meet her and talk about getting her books in German. I flew to Stuttgart, met with the publisher. I think we have seven books now translated in German. Ask and you shall receive. Are you starting to see a pattern? Let me show you just a fun one. These are just random ones in my dream book. This is just a fun one. Okay, I do speak French and our mission field is France. 
But I just thought, you know, that would be so cool if I could write one of my books in Paris. Does that sound like a dream? That's nothing spiritual. That was just a desire of my heart, right? So I put a picture of an apartment in Paris in my dream book. Let's see what God's word says. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. When I put that picture in there, I couldn't afford to go to Paris and just sit there and write a book. But here I am on a balcony in Paris writing a book. Ask and you shall receive, right? Let me just show you one more. I said, Lord, I want to impact our young people. I want to teach them how to make their dreams bigger than their memories. So I just Googled public school buildings and put a picture of schools in my dream book. And I said, Lord, I'm asking you to open doors for me to get into the school system and teach them how to make vision boards. Let's see what God's word says. John 14, 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Here's schools using our vision board course all over the U.S. Ask and you shall receive. So my question for you is what do you need to get clear on asking? God is telling you, write the vision, make it plain. Get clear on this, right? So I don't have time. I wish I had more time to teach you how to write your dreams and goals the right way. But I thought this would be kind of cool. We, I think we have a slide. I wanted to give you this little goal-setting checklist. This is just a little free download to help you. Yeah, there it is. Or actually, there it is. So if you want that, this is a goal-setting checklist that I use to set my goals. And this changed the way I achieve my goals every single year. Just follow this step by step. And I'm telling you, by December 31st, you're going to be amazed at what God does in your life. So that's just a little download, I thought, since we don't have time to teach on goal setting. So if you text that, um, TSFM Connect to 28950. Okay, hope that helps you. Okay, the other thing, I want you to remember what the Lord said. He said, ask big and believe it's done. So the second part was big. In other words, stop asking for things that you think are possible. Stop asking for things you think are possible. Steve Harvey, again, I heard him say, some of you are asking God to help you pay off your debts over the next seven years. He said, think about the God we serve. He created the whole world in seven days, and it's going to take him seven years to pay off your debts. <laughs> well, then I heard Joyce Meyer say, stop, stop praying just prayers. Like, Lord, would you just help me pay my rent? Lord, would you just help me pay off this credit card? Would you just help me make it another month? She said that word just means barely enough to get by. Joyce Meyer said, stop trying to sound pitiful. <laughs> she said, ask God for everything. If he doesn't want you to have it, he won't give it to you anyway. But here's what she said. I love this. She said, I would rather ask God for everything and get 50% then ask for nothing and get 100%. Isn't that awesome? And then Miles Monroe, I heard him say it like this. He said, the Lord told him one time, ask me to do something that makes me look like God. You should write that one down, huh? <laughs> ask me to do something that makes me look like God. So do y'all remember the story in the Bible of the blind men that approached Jesus? Two blind men approached Jesus. And it's kind of interesting how Jesus responded to them. He said to the blind men, um, what do you want me to do for you? Doesn't that seem kind of strange? Two blind men approach you and he goes, what do you want me to do for you? It's really not strange because Jesus wanted to see how big they could ask. Because they could have said, Jesus, would you just give us some food so we don't have to be out here begging for food? Jesus, would you just give us a job so we don't have to beg day after day? But no. They asked for something that only Jesus could do, something impossible. They said, Jesus, would you give us our sight? Well, I want you to think about this. What if Jesus showed up tonight in your living room and said, what do you want me to do for you? See, how you answer that question, it's going to have a big impact on how the rest of this year unfolds. I want you to say, Jesus, I am so glad you asked. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm asking for something big, right? So do y'all remember, some of you may have heard Jesse Duplantis teach a message where he talked about a chokehold. Do you remember that? Anybody? I heard it years and years ago. 
And he was talking about how so many of us have a chokehold in our lives. And this is, this is a dog leash. I have a big dog named Beauregard, and his leash is much bigger than this. But, you know, it lets him go so far, and then I push this little button, and it just puts a little choke on it, and it pulls him back, and it prevents him from going any further, right? Well, Jesse DePlanis was talking about how most of us have a chokehold in some area of our lives. In other words, where does God have to stop blessing you because you can't receive it? You choke. It's just a little too much. Let me give you an example. Ladies, let's just imagine in clothing. You could imagine spending $100, $130 on an outfit, but $700 on one dress, that's too much. <laughs> that's just a bit extreme. It's, you choke, right? Or let's just say with a house. You can imagine a $400,000 house, $600,000 house, $6 million. That's a bit extreme. That's, no, that's just too much. Or let's just say with a ministry or a business, you can imagine a million, $2 million in revenue, $20 million. I can't, I can't even wrap my mind around that. You choke. In other words, where does God have to stop blessing you because you can't receive it? It's too much. You just, you choke. So Jesse, he tells this story about his daughter, Jody, who's a good friend of mine. And Jody and her husband had just bought this brand new house. And they're just believing God for everything. They're believing for furniture. They're just so happy to have the house, you know. And so when Jesse and Kathy walked in to look at the house, Jesse said to Jody, he said, when are you going to put some rugs in here and warm up the place? And she said, oh, daddy, oh, my goodness, I got to show you this. She said, we're believing God for a new rug. As soon as we have the money, we're going to go get it. But she said, it's beautiful. We're just believing God for it. So Brother Jesse said, I tell you what. He said, your mom and I want to bless you with a housewarming gift. He said, you call them right now. Let's go get the rug. Jody said, Daddy, no. She said, I didn't show you the picture so you would pay for the rug. She said, I can't let you do that. It's too expensive. You know what Jesse said? Okay. He got in the car and went home. <laughs> so he said two months later, he goes back over to Jody's house. He walks in and he goes, Jody, when are you going to put some drapes on the window? He said, the neighbors can see in here. She said, Daddy, oh my goodness. She said, we have picked out fabric to have custom made drapes. We've already got the man picked out. He's going to make them. We're just believing God for the money. Jesse said, I tell you what. Your mom and I want to bless you with a housewarming gift. He said, let's call the man, tell him we're going to go get the fabric, get these made right now. Jody said, Daddy, <laughs> no. She said, it's not just one window, it's four windows. I cannot let you do that. It's way too expensive. What do you think? Jesse said, okay. So he got in the car and he went home. Two years later, Jody picked up her dad in her new car <laughs> and she took him to lunch. And he was admiring the car and stuff. And he said, Jody, how much do you owe on this car? She said about nineteen, twenty thousand. 20000 He said, which bank did you use? She told him which bank in New Orleans. And he said, I tell you what, let's drive to the bank right now. I'm going to pay off your car. You know what Jody said? Daddy, let the Lord lead you. <laughs> I love that. Don't you love that? But you know what Jesse said? He said she finally took the chokehold off. He said that money was waiting for her all along, but she couldn't receive it. She just kept choking. It was just too much. But then Jesse made this statement. He said, you know, this Bible was written 2,000 years ago. When are we going to take God at his word and stop choking when we're asking God for something big? So God said, ask big and believe it's done. So the third part I want to share is the believe part. Here's the thing. No matter what God has promised you, if your mind can't handle it, you'll never get it. No matter what God has promised you, if your mind can't handle it, you'll never get it. Think about that. So I'm going to show you, and I'm going to do it fast because I know it's a Wednesday night. I'm going to wrap it up really, really quick. Five ways you show God that you believe. Because remember, he said, ask big and believe it's done. Are you ready? The first one, number one, y'all probably expected this tonight. You have to write the vision, right? Texas-sized pencil. You got to write the vision and make it plain. 
You probably know this, Habakkuk 2.2 says, write the vision, make it plain. And every success coach will tell you this principle. They say, don't just think it, ink it, right? It's not a dream if you leave it in your head. You've got to get pen to paper. Do y'all remember the stats I've told you of the professor at Virginia Tech who did research on successful people and goal setting? He said he just walked up to random people on the street and asked them one question. He said, what are your goals? What are your goals for life? He said 80% said, I don't have any goals. So think of 80% of people walking around with no vision. What's the Bible say? Where there is no vision, you're perishing. He said 16% said, I have some goals, but I've never written them down. 3% said, I've written my goals at some point, but I don't know where they are. 1% said, I have goals, I've written them down, and I review them on a consistent basis. He said, you know who the 1% were? Millionaires. Every single one of them were millionaires. And the clues they gave us, number one, I have goals. Number two, I don't leave them in my head. I actually grab a pen and I write them down. And number three, I'm constantly looking at them. I'm constantly praying over them. Okay, so number one, write the vision. Number two is you speak to the dream. The Bible says to call those things that be not as though they are, right? I don't just make a little dream book and just expect it to magically appear. No, God says, call those things. Prophesy your future. Declare your destiny. Remember Ezekiel spoke to a valley of dead bones and commanded life, right? Ladies, we can speak to our metabolism and command it to speed up. You can speak to your career and command it to flourish. Speak to your marriage and command it to be restored. Jesus spoke to a fig tree and it withered, right? So you got to speak them into existence. Number three is you take action toward the dream. I heard a success coach say, the one thing that separates winners from losers more than anything else is winners take action. They get up and do what needs to be done. Think about how the Bible says faith without action, without works, is dead, right? So when I had a dream to write a book, I didn't just put it in my dream book and just every day go, Lord, thank you for a publisher. Thank you that I'm writing books. No, I had to actually go in my little room and write the book when nobody was asking me for a manuscript. Nobody knew what I was writing. Nobody cared what I was writing. But I got the book ready so when the publisher called, I could say, here's the book. I had to take action, right? Let me, let me illustrate this real quick. So I, I put something special together for Living Word. Um, this is not on our website. This is just for Living Word. It's a dreams and goals notebook, just like mine. But we do have other colors. I don't know why you wouldn't want pink, but we do have... <laughs> We have black and we have aqua, but it's a dream routine planner just like mine where you put what you're believing for, you update it, and then when it manifests, you put a picture. Y'all, this will build your faith like you can't imagine. When you just go through and look at all the things God has done, it just builds your faith that he'll keep doing it. There's a place to document your personal growth, the books you're reading, the conferences you're attending, the courses you're enrolled in. There's a place I show you how to map out your week, your schedule, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, there's a dream routine planner. And then I put a little flash drive on here with four messages that I chose. One of them is called the power of your next decision. And I talk about four decisions you must make if you're going to be successful. One of them is called why not you and why not now? Stop procrastinating because somebody's waiting for you to go after your dream. There's another message, the Ask Big message I'm sharing tonight is on here. And then there was one more message called How to Organize Your Life, How to Get Things in Order So You're Not Stressed Out All the Time. So anyway, those four messages I chose and put on here, and there's two books, Ask Big, and then another book called Don't Shrink Your Dream, Enlarge Your Faith. Now, I want to ask you, this is, like I said, this is just for living word, um, this is $115, I think, but we reduced it to $60 for y'all tonight if you want this. So I wanted to ask, does anybody feel like this would be helpful? Like to be able to keep your dreams and goals in one place and to hear messages that build your faith. Does anybody want this one? There you go. <laughs> he gets a pink planner. <laughs> So my point was, he took action, right? And I've discovered that when you take action, 
you literally have to get out of your comfort zone and do something awkward. Because I would be more like the type to stay back there, but I've had to learn to get out of my comfort zone and take action, right? Okay, so number four is that you sow seed for your dream. You sow seed for your dream. My parents have ingrained this in me. Nobody can talk me out of it. That anytime you talk to God about your needs, God's going to talk to you about seed. <laughs> that you got to sow where you want to go. Every dream I have ever seen come to pass in my life, I've sown a seed for it. When I wanted to write books, I sowed seed into someone else's ministry whose books changed my life. When I wanted to start my Icing Women's Conference, I sowed seed into Joyce Meyer because she already had a successful women's conference. When I wanted to buy my offices, I sowed seed into Joel Osteen because he bought the Compact Center. <laughs> so I said, I want that anointing on my offices. So you got to sow where you want to go, right? And number five is you praise God before the dream manifest, right? You praise God before it manifests. Do you know the highest expression of your faith in God is when you start going, thank you, Jesus, for things that haven't even happened yet? That touches the heart of God. I do it so expressively that my friends, I like to make them think it really happened. Like we'll be walking through France on our mission trips and I'll go, y'all, I have an apartment in Paris. Thank you, Jesus. And they're like, you do? I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I do. <laughs> I just like to convince people that it's already happened, right? But do y'all remember the story of Paul and Silas? You know, they're thrown into the prison. They're beaten. They've got chains wrapped around their feet. They started praising God at the worst time. The Bible says the midnight hour. That's the darkest hour, isn't it? They just start praising God, but it was so loud that other prisoners heard them. And it touched the heart of God so much that he sent an earthquake from heaven. The walls shook, the earth crumbled, it says the chains fell off their feet, and the prison doors opened up. God will open doors in your life you never dreamed possible when you start praising him before it manifests. Does that help you tonight? So let me just say, you have not because you but the opposite is, ask and you shall. And in the words of Steve Harvey, if you up your ask, God will up his give, right? So do y'all enjoy that tonight? Does it help you? Well, I don't, I don't think I have another one of our bundles. Um, yeah, I don't think I have another one. But that bundle that I just showed you, um, we put that together for y'all tonight. There it is on the screen. The one thing I didn't get to explain to you was that little orange book that says, Don't Shrink Your Dream, Enlarge Your Faith. I was, one year, it was a couple years ago, it was in August, and I was looking at my goals for the year, which I teach you how to set your top 10 goals for the year. Research supports staying between 7 to 10 goals for the year. It was August, and I had not achieved one single goal. And I was so frustrated, and I thought, okay, I guess I've gotten a little ahead of myself. I need to bring it down a little bit. And in prayer one day, when I was literally about to get my laptop out and just kind of reduce my dreams, I heard the Lord speak those seven words to me. He said, don't shrink your dream. Enlarge your faith. In other words, the dream is not the problem. It's the dreamer. Be it unto you according to your faith. And God began to walk me through seven action steps that I teach in that book. And by December, I had achieved eight of those impossible dreams. Isn't that amazing? So that's what's in that little book. So if y'all want to get that little bundle, um, it's only here tonight at Living Word, or if you're watching online, we will honor that. Um, if we run out, you, we will still honor it, and we'll ship it to you, like, immediately. So for $60. Is it okay if I mention one more thing? Okay. I want to say this real quick, because I know this is not for everybody, but it is for some of you. How many of you in here feel like God's really dealing with you about it's time to go to a new level. Like it's time to, okay, how about you feel like God's really dealing with you about a new beginning? Okay, one more question, and this is one people don't like. But how many of you feel like God's dealing with you about developing more self-discipline? Okay, I'm talking to a bunch of you. <laughs> so... I put together a program called Vision 101, and the reason I'm telling you this is because, here's the little notebook, um, 
years ago, when I was first beginning this season of transformation, I'm listening to Mac Hamlin, and I'm just, God's healing me of all the junk from my past. I heard this in prayer. The Lord said to me, when I know you're ready, get ready. And he said it again, when I know you're ready, get ready. I didn't even know what that meant, but I thought the Lord's trying to tell me to prepare, but I don't even know what it's for. Because I didn't know I was going to be doing what I'm doing. But I started getting vision for every area of my life. A vision for my finances, because they were a mess. We had nothing in our savings account. We lived paycheck to paycheck. We spent everything we earned. I started getting clear vision for my finances. Got out of debt. Started saving money. Started learning how to invest money. I started getting a vision for my fitness, getting my body in shape. I started getting a vision for my self-confidence because I was so insecure. I could barely even look people in the eyes. But God showed me how to transform my self-image so I could do what he was calling me to do. I got a vision for my schedule. I started learning how to use a time map and actually schedule things. That's how I've written 15 books in 15 years. I learned how to schedule things. Um, I started learning how to get my house organized. So anyway, there's all these modules in this coaching program that I call Vision 101 because you're going to get a vision for every area of your life. But the bottom line is it's your routine. It's your habits. It's your self-discipline. But God showed me how to make it a part of my life. So for 20 years, I have been practicing these habits, and I've never stopped. But God showed me how to stay self-motivated because the secret of your future is in your routine. So let me just close out with this. If you feel like God is telling you it's time to kick it up a notch and start investing in yourself, this is, like I said, this is not for everybody, and it's an investment. It's over $1,000. I don't know if they have it on the screen. Over $1,000 worth of content and um, audio books and all kinds of resources. It's 13 modules with me, but we reduce it to $397. But here's the thing I want to tell you if you feel like God is speaking to you. When I was making these changes and I'm starting all these habits and nobody knows what I'm doing behind the scenes, I'm waking up earlier, I'm going for walks, I'm reading, I've got my house cleaned up, I'm doing all these little habits. One time I heard a minister say this on my way to the office. He said, somebody in need is waiting on the other side of your obedience. And he said it twice, and the CD would end. Somebody in need is waiting on the other side of your obedience. And I'd be driving to work going, nobody's waiting on me to get disciplined, to get my finances in order. That doesn't affect anybody else. Who could be waiting on me? And then I'd go to the office, but I would be replaying that in my head over and over. Could anybody be waiting on me to get my act together? But y'all, today... When I think about people I get to meet, I was in Seattle, and I met this giant man. He walked up to me at a book signing with his family, and he goes, can I have a hug? And I was like, yes, sir. So I hugged him, (laughs) and we took a picture and stuff. And then after we, and he had tears pouring down his face. And when he walked away, his little daughter came running back to me, and she said, you will never know what that hug and what this ministry means to our family. I said, what? Tell me. She said, my dad was an atheist. He was an alcoholic, depressed, near suicidal, wanted nothing to do with God. He stumbled upon you on YouTube. Your voice caught his attention. He gave his heart to the Lord. And she said, he saw you were going to be in Seattle and told the family, we're going to hear Terry. She said, my dad is not a fan. He is a fanatic about Jesus. Now, when I see stories like that, I think somebody in need was waiting for me to just get disciplined, to get focused, to discover my purpose. So if you feel like God's speaking to you, I want you to know you're worth the investment. Just do whatever God's telling you to do. So if that's you, we're going to open enrollment tonight. Some of you may want to get signed up tonight. There's a payment plan if you want to pay it out. But I wanted to mention that tonight because I feel like there are some of you who feel like God's speaking to you. So can I pray over you? As we dismiss, and then Jim, you'll come back. Okay. Y'all want to stand up? Did you enjoy it? Yay. I'm going to take my giant pill back home with me. So (laughs) that was cute, though, wasn't it? Okay. 
So how about, y'all probably, you may remember this, but I love when we lift our hands because it's the universal sign of surrender, right? When the police arrest somebody. <laughs> but we're going to surrender everything to the Lord tonight. You know, we got a lot of year left for 2024, don't we? It's going to be the best year you have ever had. It's going to be a record-breaking year in your life. So let's just seal the deal in prayer. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you and I thank you for every precious person who came out tonight, who's watching online. Lord, I believe you are speaking right to their spirits. You're stirring up dreams. Lord, I believe that limitations are being removed. Things that have held them back are no longer holding them back. The chokehold is being removed. And, Lord, you're the one who said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, you're doing a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Lord, we declare tonight the new thing begins. New discipline, new habits, a new mindset, a new level of faith to start asking big and asking you to do something that only you can do. And Father, we go ahead and say thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. I'll be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Jim. So wow, couldn't, couldn't we use her about four days? <laughs> I felt like she was rushing through stuff. Um, that was just amazing. Isn't it a special anointing? It, it really is, isn't it? You, you, you go so many places with what she says, and she just refines the things that you're not doing. And thank you so much. Terry, remember... Uh, she's a book signing and her book table. Thank you so much for coming to church. Living Word, hope to see you this weekend. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of service today. Uh, we are so glad for everything God is doing here at Living Word and Living Word Online. I want to remind you, be a part of the community here. Check out Alpha. Check out the soaps, the scripture, observation, application, and prayer study that we have on Living Word online Facebook group. We want you to be a part of it. Uh, and everything else that we have, be part of the community. God bless you. Have an amazing week.